All right, so we're going to take a break from the usual tomfoolery on this channel and actually take some time to make a serious video for once. So what this is about is we've all seen the videos online of the teardowns of various oil filters and how garbage ones like Fram are that are just bottom dollar cheap garbage that just don't filter much or just made poorly and you shouldn't run them because they're they might damage your engine now this isn't about that what this is about is that even known good parts can still sometimes be faulty and if you're not paying real close attention can do some serious damage now what i'm talking about here is this oil filter right here this is a Mobile One Extended Performance. By no means is this a bad oil filter. This is a normally a really good oil filter. But in this case, this had some something wrong with it that almost destroyed that engine. So first, we're going to go over here right quick. Now if you look down here, you'll see that, uh, if I can get an angle, that oil filter is on sideways. Now. Filters that are like that, that are on either sideways or upside down, if you're Subaru, they have to have something in there. And that is going to be a check valve. Now you can see them if you look in the top, that little orange ring that's in there. What that does is that oil enters the oil filter through these holes on the side. What you want is that when you shut your engine off, that oil does not come back out and drain back down into the tank. Now that check, check um, valve does is exactly that. It stops the oil from draining in, so the next time you start it, there's still oil in there so that it can just pick oil pressure back up right away and get going and you won't damage your engine. Now what happened here is that a little while ago, or a while ago, because that had been on there for about 6,000 miles, a little while after I changed my oil last, I had noticed that this thing was making a terrible, terrible noise when I started it up, particularly cold. Now, just in my experience, I knew that that was a rod knock because it was a really fast, just banging real bad. Now, hearing that, I decided, to, you know, oil was fine. It was still there, and it was making oil pressure. So, to protect the engine further, to keep it from spitting a rod out the side of the block... I made sure that every time I cold started this engine, I would um, I'd shut the idle air control motor off, and I would crank it until it builds oil pressure, and then I would let it start. That way, it is spinning the engine slow, so even though I can still hear the rod knock, and it's not going to really, really damage it. Now that worked at least for limiting damage. And I was unsure of what exactly happened for a while, but a few days ago I went and changed my oil. Now I had the pan under there because I'm expecting that when I take this filter off and I turn it up, that there's going to be oil draining out onto the ground. What I found instead was that filter was empty. Now that's not something you should typically see. So that's what made me realize what the problem was is that the check valve in the old filter was not working and it was allowing the oil to drain back so I was dry starting the system every time now what I should have what I should have been an indicator of that for me is I had noticed that that end, that this thing was taking quite a bit longer to build oil pressure than I thought was really reasonable I'd be sitting here cranking for like almost 30 seconds, which, you know, the battery just loved that. Um, I really should have probably thought that, hey, something might be a little bit off here. And that's really my point here. It's like, if your car does not have an oil pressure gauge, fucking put one in. Those things are just way too damn important. Because little things like that, you should build oil pressure immediately. Because what I found is that after I put that new oil filter in there... It's not the same one. It's a different one. It's a pure later boss. But I put it in there, and now it builds oil pressure almost immediately. Which, uh, that's how I was like, okay, something was definitely wrong here. So, my point in this video is not to bash these filters, say they're bad, don't buy them or whatever. These are normally perfectly good filters. Just 
pay really close attention with things like this because that could cost you your engine. Because if I didn't notice, if I didn't know that noise was a rod knock, I would have kept starting it normally and I'd probably have had a rod out the side of that block a while ago. Don't assume that just because it's a high quality part that it works properly. Now I've gone ahead and cut the filter open just so we can see what's inside. So this right here is the check valve. Now it's supposed to, this surface here is supposed to seal right here. So that oil, when it's pressed, when it's got pressure, flows in, and then when it's not, stops. Now there's nothing I can immediately see as to why that was happening, but as with seals, it sometimes isn't immediately obvious. It just sometimes, just the smallest little not quite right, or speck of something on there will just make it leak. Now I also just wanted to see how much bearing material is in here. Now don't worry about this stuff on the top, that's just from me cutting it with the grinder. So let's see, can we see any sparkles in here? Now the camera's not going to pick this up, but I do believe I see something. Yeah, I see little sparklies in there. That's definitely not good. Camera's not going to be able to see it, so I'm not going to bother. But uh, it's in there. So let me reiterate. I'm not calling these filters bad. Obviously, you should buy a good filter. Don't go buy those cheap garbage frames that plenty of people have shown how bad they are. But just the, your oil pressure gauge is your most important gauge in your car. The rest of them don't fucking matter. Your oil pressure gauge is the most important. You really should be keeping a close eye on how long it takes to build oil pressure and how much of it you have. Because if it's taken too long to build oil pressure, as mine was, something's wrong. And in this case, this was wrong. Because now that because of this $20 part, Actually, this is probably wasn't even $20. How much does the damn thing cost? I don't remember. But just because of this, now I gotta pull that engine out and replace all the bearings in it because they are all toasted. Which I can't do until I get this truck done so that I have something else to drive while that thing's all torn apart. So I have the bearings, I just can't put them in whether it's in the car. And it's a good thing I know how to do it myself, otherwise it would cost a lot of fucking money. So just be careful out there. That's all I'm saying.